What's going on guys, Victor here. Now today is a special day because Brooke and I are out here and we're trying to film four videos in one day. We just left Hillsborough Inlet and netted a ton of glass minnows, also known as Florida Bay anchovies. Now these are gonna be in a completely separate video in a catch and cook. We're out here in 15 feet of water, got a chum bag in the water and check this out. There are hordes and hordes of needlefish or houndfish, whatever you want to call them. I, I always get confused between the two species, but they are piled behind the boat and they are so fired up on the glass minnows. I've been wanting to do a catch and cook with these for a very long time. We got a beautiful day out here, it's crystal clear. So let's get some lines in the water and put some needlefish in the boat. So the same thing that we're firing them up with, chumming them in, these little anchovies. I got a little baby mustad circle hook. These fish have extremely small mouths. So I'm just going to put one on there like that. And let's see if we can get one to eat. Let's toss them in at the same time, get them stupid. Look, you got one. Yep. The trick with these fish is you have to let them eat it for a long time. They have these, when I bring them in the boat, you guys are going to see they have these little needle-like teeth. And they don't swallow their bait whole. They got to chomp on them first. And look at them. See how much line I'm letting them take? Until he completely swallows that hook. Switched out my hook to an even smaller hook because these are really small needlefish and they just keep ripping it off. Just like that. Come on, buddy. There we go. We finally got one on. Now I can explain to you guys why these little things are so dang hard to hook. So check this out. That is a gnarly mouth. Look at that thing. It's like a little alligator jaw. They have all these little tiny teeth and this long mouth. So when they grab your bait, they'll grab it there. They'll chomp on it, chomp on it. Cause they don't have a very big mouth and you think that they swallowed it, but they're really just running around with it, squirming around and chomping on it. Crazy little animal, isn't it? That's why I got to fish this little baby mustad. I got one in the boat though. So I think the best approach is not to put out a whole minnow. You just do half a one, cast it out. Already smoked it. There we go, now we got the rhythm of it down. And they're all around the same size. These things actually get huge. You guys comment below whether this is a needlefish or a houndfish. I can never tell the difference. I believe these are needle needlefish. I think houndfish have a shorter snout. Needlefish have a longer mouth. But look at them. Little kids probably think they look like swordfish or sailfish. They are a funky looking fish. Look at how long they are. Well, we probably got like six needlefish in the box. I want a dozen or so at least because they're not very big and I want to make a big family meal out of needlefish. Okay guys, one of my favorite parts of any video is the cleaning portion. I get to show you guys the fish's anatomy and all the crazy things that we eat. So needlefish, get that name from that needle-like beak and they have tiny little baby teeth. And as you guys saw when we were trying to catch them, they're feeding on those little minnows which are full of, their stomachs are full of them. What they do is they'll go up and grab it like this and they run with it super fast. So you think that they got it in there, in their gullet, in their mouth, but their mouths are actually pretty small. So they're just sitting out there chomping on it. So you really got them let them eat for a very long time, as you guys saw. I've never eaten a needlefish before. I don't know anyone who's eaten them. I've seen a couple of videos on Instagram of people cooking them whole. So that's the way I'm gonna prepare it. I don't think it's a very big fish to fillet, so we're gonna do it whole. First thing I'm gonna do, they don't really have scales, but I'm just gonna knock off any of the slime that's on here, which you guys will see in a little bit. And the fins, like the pec fin, the anal fins and dorsal fins, I'm gonna remove at home once we get a, a nice kitchen knife or a, a nice uh, pair of shears, scissors. So this is my fourth one I've cleaned now. And this is the best way to do it, check it out. His butt, literally his bum is right there. Stick the tip of your knife in there, go all the way up, just very superficially, all the way up through his throat, okay? 
That's all his entrails, his gut cavity and everything. Take your knife right behind the head. Don't go all the way through it, but just halfway like that. Now I'm going to be able to just, it's all going to fall apart with his head. If you go all the way through his head, you're going to have to rip the guts out by hand, but it's attached to his head if you don't do it otherwise. So I'm waiting, I'm waiting until the rain subsides a little bit so you guys can hear me better, but look around me. It's sunny everywhere. This is what you call a sun shower. Pouring rain, pretty blue skies, but still a sun shower. So needlefish, ballyhoo, all fish that kind of stay buoyant on top. You always see needlefish when you're at the pier or beach, they're always on top of the water. I'm pretty sure this air sac I don't know if it's part of their bladder or if it's just a separate organ, but this I'm pretty sure keeps it stayed afloat. And if you listen, kind of sounds like those things you pack in uh, in boxes. So to get rid of that, take a, a not sharp object like a little butter knife right here. And we're going to take from the uh, butt side to the head side, kind of just scrape it out. So when I do this, not only am I taking out that air sac, but you're gonna see on my butter knife, I'm getting rid of some of the bloodline from the underneath, from the underside. And any guts that I may have missed earlier. So I'm pressing pretty firmly against that uh, backbone. See all that? That's something you don't wanna eat as well. Now we squirt out. So everything I've seen on Instagram where people cook them, cook them whole in a pan like this, and when it's done, we should be able to just take the backbone, slide it right out, and have a nice boneless piece of filet. And since we're on the subject of Instagram, if you guys aren't following me on Instagram, if you do it so here, I'm going to have it on the screen, at Landshark Outdoors. I do a ton of giveaways and stuff on there. So go ahead and give your boy a follow on Instagram. Now. Okay, guys, so I'm just over here casually scoring the skin of my needlefish. Like I said, I've never cooked these guys before. But anytime I've cooked fish with the skin on, scoring is gonna do one of two things. It usually prevents it from curling up, which I don't think we'd have an issue with these guys, but just in case. And then also, it creates a nice little love pocket for all those flavors to get into your fish. So we got the needlefish with the heads off, tails on. I really hope that it's just like the Instagram videos, where after it's cooked, we should be able to rip that backbone right out and have a boneless needlefish. Salt and pepper on our needlefish. And I think I already said this once in the video, but if you guys know the difference between needlefish and houndies, houndfish, go ahead and comment below because I honestly don't. Garlic powder. Paprika. Hey, Brick, I think my seasoning is getting pretty good. What do you think? Look at that. Looks nice like and even. seasoning the pan a lot. Well, it's kind of inevitable. Look at my target. It's, it's not a very... Want me to show you my yeah. skills? Yeah, well, let's see. Are you flipping them over? Yeah. Okay. All right, guys, welcome back to the kitchen. Here's Brooke taking a turn. <laughs> okay. Ready? Yeah. Look right. at that big pile. <laughs> I just like to mess with you, Vic. I know. You it's eat all, all my food. It's all about love. <laughs> now we're gonna hit him with a little bit of cornmeal. Wow, that is beautiful, Vic. Is it? Yeah, look at Man, that. Man, see, I watch you one time and I'm a master now. That was amazing. <laughs> now we're gonna do a little bit of flour, and this is just to give it some exterior. Let's see if I can. Well, we got a. Pretty big storm brewing, but I got a cast iron pan out here with a little peanut oil. We're gonna just very shallow pan fry these needlefish. Look at the storm. Yeah, we are definitely working against time tonight. And someone just started like a generator or something. But this storm is gonna be kind of crazy. So screwed. Did you, did you get that landing on video? I think. We are so screwed. I hope these things cook fast. 
So, I only had, I did a flip while Brooke was inside. I only had one needlefish stick, and that's just because I didn't have enough oil and it was a little lopsided. So one of them didn't have enough oil, but they're looking good. They're crisping up nicely. Hopefully they taste as good. The storm's kind of freaking me out. It saddens me to say that this might be the very first fish on a catch and cook that I would not recommend ever taking home. I was so excited for this. I saw people just rip the bones right off and I don't know if that was a different species of houndfish, but let me show you guys something. Let's, let's take this guy for example. Okay, if you take that backbone and you just start to pull the meat right off of it, and just keep pulling and pulling and pulling, even after you take the um, even after you take the backbone out, there are bones everywhere. I mean, it is just covered in bones. It reminds me of a clown knife fish. Look at that. These tiny little annoying bones that I'm not saying you can't eat this thing. I'll show you right now on, on video. The flesh itself, delicious. It tastes like any other fish. Not bad, but for me to serve this to six or seven people would be a nightmare. There are bones everywhere, literally everywhere. I think the best thing to do with this fish is kind of like what I did with the, with the clown knife. Scrape the meat off probably, make some type of fish cake or something out of it. Now, I could be completely wrong. You guys might have a way of doing it, but this is one challenge that I have accept, I've accepted defeat at. But I want, Brooke, I want you to just try the fish I itself. did try it. I thought it was delicious. You did? Yeah, I just had to take out like three bones out of a piece of fish that was like this big. I mean, it is annoying. I've, I've literally never thrown fish away and said like, oh my gosh, I don't want to eat this. Flavor is great, but I just, I can't serve this. And especially if I'm going to serve it in like a sauce or something, there's just way too many bones. So I, I want you to just try a piece of the flesh. The flesh is delicious but there are too many bones to eat. I can uh, see them. Like, here, I'll get, get yourself a fresh one. And just try to pick it apart. It's just, I, I thought the backbone would just come right out, but just there's just careful. so many little bones careful. everywhere. Everywhere? Everywhere. This doesn't look like it no, has No, no, careful, careful, really? careful. Really, this has them? Yeah, yeah, look, they're in there. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. There's yeah. a bunch of little feather-like bones. Oh, no. Especially for someone who needs glasses. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even see these bones. But you see what I'm talking about, right? That right there sticking up, that's a bone. It, oh, God, there's yeah, a whole, there's so a whole pack of bones here. Yeah. Tastes good, though. It tastes good, <laughs> right? When, yeah. you, when you have eyes to pull out the bones, it does taste good. All right, I'm kind of scared of it then, because you want to help him out, Fisher? No, I'm, I'm going to pass. No, I think you did pretty good on that piece. You think you so? You just got to try the flesh. I would say you're probably good to go on that piece. All right, let's see. Oh, I know. Fisher sure made us get so cute. Careful like, chewing. Like <laughs> no, I got bones. You got bones? Mm. OK, but the fish is not bad. No, no, but it's hard to eat fish with bones. Here. <laughs> <laughs> Um, it's a really shame, a big shame that we can't eat these because they have a really good flavor, the seasoning's nice, and they actually taste good. The little tiny piece I ate was was really good. It's, it's really sad. <laughs> but maybe I can take them home and feed them to the fish in the canal. I'm going to end the video there, guys. If you want to see an actual good fish to eat, which is a chub, Brooke caught some giant chubs on the boat today. She's making chub quesadillas. We got the whole family in the background. We're still gonna eat good. Um, really disappointed. Hopefully you guys smash that like button, cheer me up, because I hate like accepting defeat. I wanna say there's no such thing as trash fish, but you guys comment below, wherever you are in the world, if you guys have a way to eat these things and they're the Florida kind, go ahead, comment below, because the way I did it, no bueno. Did not work out. I want to thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll catch you guys in that next one.